How's it going, folks? I'm pretty excited because today we are actually driving the 2022 Chevy Silverado LT Crew Cab. This one is kind of special because it is, number one, it's a three liter diesel, so that's pretty cool. And then also number two, this is the Trail Boss Edition. So, and it's really that last little bit that really interests me. And what we're gonna do in this video is simply uh, I'm gonna give you my driving impressions. We're gonna talk through the uh, features and functionality of the truck. And then I'm gonna kind of sum it up and give you a sense of whether or not this is something you should consider buying if you're in the market. So with all that being said, let's get into it. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the interior of the truck now, but before we do, I did wanna point out a couple things. One is, keep in mind, this is the Trail Boss. This is the off-road edition. You've got the big beefy tires and the muscular lines and the styling cues like no chrome bumper and highlighted exhaust. Never mind the fact that it's got different suspension and other, other components to make it more trail worthy. But when you look in the interior, it's, completely luxurious and even really tech filled. And I think those two themes kind of clash a little bit, but maybe that's how they justify the price of the truck. Either way, with that in mind, let's check out the inside. So as you can see, the truck has a really nice digital display, which is customizable and gives you great information, super clear, crisp graphics, pretty much what you would expect out of a modern truck. And you do get this really nice infotainment screen, which is um, really large. And I think that's uh, great. So that way the passenger could easily work it while you're driving. As you can see, I got uh, Apple CarPlay up, but you also do have the option for Android Auto and it's pretty responsive. I found it to be uh, relatively easy to use and, and uh, super intuitive. So that's really great. Uh, below it, you do have um, these common buttons that you would use and they're large enough buttons that I think it's designed to use if you're wearing work gloves or something. But I don't think these two buttons are really necessary. I mean, once you push them once, you probably never use them again. But auto start stop for sure. And then dropping the tailgate automatically is nice as well as lowering all the windows down. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, over here, you do get your uh, trail brake uh, assist, which is cool. It's built in. And of course, HVAC controls are all manual. Thank you for that. And besides that, I mean, really just all the stuff that you're touching, the leathers, the faux wood trim, the, the little chrome accents, it all kind of works nice. And you do have a ton of storage like that extra hidden cubby, as well as a regular glove box. Um, I mean, overall, really, really nice. You do also have on this side, to show you this, you have for four wheel drive uh, capabilities, your, your high and your low, which is pretty cool right there, and your two wheel drive. Um, but you also have your auto locking differential and that's for the rear. Uh, and you got uh, tow modes here and this is the, uh, basically it'll, it will help with controlling your tow modes uh, as well as some lighting options here. And one more thing that I think is worth pointing out is uh, this function right here, which is cameras. So what's cool about this is, yes, you do get your, um, you know, your traditional backup view, which it does turn with the steering wheel, which is great. Um, and I like this where you can actually see all around the truck, but you could also toggle and now you can see, you know, behind you, in front of you, you could also toggle to see like directly, um, like sort of top-down view in front of your hood, in front of your hood. So in case you're like off-roading and there's some, you know, obstacles, you really want to get a sense of how close you are. I think that's really cool. And you can do the same thing from behind. But for me, this is probably my most useful 
uh, camera trick here, which is the side. So basically sometimes you don't know how close you are to a wall or a rock or an obstacle or something, and that allows you to see. Uh, and you can toggle that both ways, front wheels and back. Very, very cool stuff. And then this is cool too, if you're trailering, you push that and this is showcasing, that's where your uh, trailer hitch is. So if you're backing up and you just wanna be able to like connect to your trailer the first time, this makes it completely easier. So very, very cool to see that. Finally, I do actually wanna count the cup holders because I think that is a huge plus. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So there you go. We actually have 10 cup holders throughout this truck. Pretty cool. So one thing I do want to point out, which is a little bit of a negative, is this black piece on the hood. It is just for aesthetics. Uh, I don't think it actually gives you any sort of aerodynamic property or anything, but you know, one thing about it that I, I do like is that I actually do think it looks good on the front of the truck. But if you look back here, well, these black, um, you know, cap plates, it's really just the back of that piece. Um, if you're driving and the sun hits those just the right way, they actually glimmer right back into your face as a driver and blind you. So that's the one negative, but uh, I do like the way they look. As part of the design of the front, they have included these air curtains here, which actually allow air to scoop in through there and then basically break up a lot of the air, as you can see right here, a lot of the pressure that builds up in the wheel well at highway speeds. And I think that's pretty cool because that should actually help fuel economy on some level and reduce the, uh, the air tension on the front of the truck. Uh, but you can see, I mean, this is really, you know, Chevy's, I call it the uh, punch fist design because it really does look like it's punching the air from every angle. And they've had this design for a little while and they fine tune it and tweak it. But, you know, in this trim, it does, does look pretty mean and uh, grows on you really fast. All right, so one of the coolest functions of the truck is really the tailgate. And this is a multifunction tailgate for a lot of different reasons. But here's why I like it, because it comes with two buttons here and the tailgate's actually designed to split. So check this out. You push that, drops down, nicely dampened as you saw, and you have access to the things in your trunk or your bed, um, which is great. But what if you've got loads that you wanna actually put into the back of the truck? This has always been a challenge because you don't actually have you know, a step. And so they thought of that, which is the second button, collapses that down and unveils this neat little step. And gives you this nice little handle, grab onto, and bam, into the back of the truck. How cool is that? So, what does the Trail Boss feel like to drive? Well, I think if you're thinking about a Trail Boss, the first thing you're thinking about is suspension, really, right? Uh, and so, I brought this Trail Boss to a nice little road I know in Marin County where the road is windy, um, parts of it are dirt, <laughs> but all of it is paved like crap. <laughs> so what that means is we're basically bouncing around, uh, going through potholes, uh, even on some of these uh, just poorly managed dirt sections. I mean, you know, it, it handles them fine. I, this is not, um, the suspension is not really designed to be full-time off-road. It's not like the same quality you would get if you upgraded to a set of King shocks or something like that. Um, but for just a truck from the factory, you do get the sense that, yeah, I mean, it, it's designed to have articulation. It's designed to, you know, allow the truck to flex a little bit when one wheel dips and one raises up. Um, and you know, you're living with this on the street primarily, right? So I think on the street, cause I drove it for a couple of days on the street, it, feels amazing like it's well dampened for that and um, just very uh, fluid so in terms of ride quality I think most people will be very happy with this and I also think if you are a serious off-roader this probably isn't the truck you're gonna go for but if it is the one you choose yeah you're gonna want to upgrade these shocks you're gonna want to get something that's gonna also raise the vehicle up to get a little bit more ground clearance um, with bigger wheels that kind of thing 
So just to talk about the steering for a second, it feels pretty light. Um, you know, it's it. I think it's really designed more for, you know, street driving and it's so simple to do. I mean, you could really almost use your finger to steer the truck. Um, you know, so that's good for the masses, right? I mean, my grandma can get in here and, and drive this thing. And, you know, even though it's too big, she'd probably freak out on the size, but would she be able to take it down the street? Yes. So from that perspective, I think they've done a really good job, but in terms of being off-road, I also think it detracts a little bit from, you know, wheel placement and where you feel um, the truck's actually, you know, sitting on the line on any given trail. So, I mean, obviously I'm not on a trail right now, so I, I couldn't tell you for sure, but that's just what, it, just the sense I get from it. In terms of the torque and the power, I mean, this thing feels great. This Duramax diesel engine, this three liter, man, it's, it's got some good punch. And, you know, I, I had my whole family in here and, you know, I mean, you, you feel like you just load up everybody in your truck and go somewhere and you're not really gonna notice really any change. Like for just sake of argument, in the Tacoma, if you don't have gearing done, if you don't have it tuned, if you don't have a supercharger, if you haven't done something to compensate for the way that transmission is is programmed when you really load it up what happens in that thing is it hunts for gears a lot it changes gears when you don't want it to it forces you to really wring its neck to get some power out of it for any given situation where in this it kind of just doesn't even matter it just you know i don't care what i got attached to me or inside of me i'm just gonna do it the way i would do it and it's kind of awesome one thing I got to point out is their tire choice. You know, I know they had to go with a, you know, more or less kind of mud terrain, you know, really bulky tire to really earn the, the trail boss name, right? I mean, all that makes sense. But I still think these tires are small for the just proportions of the truck. And honestly, I think the tires just for everyday driving, kind of let the truck down. I mean, they're not geared for fuel savings, we know that, so it kind of hurts your fuel economy a little bit, I'd imagine. Um, they don't really provide a handling benefit. Um, you know, it makes the truck feel really lower to the ground than I think they sh than it should be based on its size. So it's just really interesting. I almost feel like they went with this size tire, which again is about a 32, um, really just for the sake of having Wranglers on there and being able to say, this is a trail boss edition. Um, I, I much rather would have had them uh, either put a larger tire, kind of like what the Bronco is doing right now, where you can get you know the 35s from the factory, 37s from the factory. I mean, you know, Jeep and, and Ford are figuring that out. If Chevy really wants to be part of that crowd, I think they can't be afraid to put on a size of a tire that somebody who does off-road would really, really want. And so, you know, just for the fact that I think this truck is great, but it does have an identity crisis in terms of, is it really meant for off-roading or is it meant for something else? I think the tires let it down for that. But to discuss what I mean about identity i mean this truck is so luxurious i mean i i don't know like i feel kind of bad getting it dirty <laughs> you know and i think um you can live with this every single day and be happy and make this your daily driver i think you really could and you know it'll take you anywhere you need to go it's going to be really reliable it's going to allow you to tow your trailer your boat your whatever no problem so in all of those aspects what a great thing but in terms of being an off-road focused vehicle, I don't think it needed to be this dressed up. And I think that's where my challenge comes in with this particular version of the truck. I mean, silver autos are great and you can buy them in lots of different trims that have you know, more of a daily uh, feel, something that's more luxurious or something that's more of a work truck. They've got the spectrum figured out, but because this is designed to be more for the off-road enthusiast, 
I kind of feel like they should have done something different with the interior versus making it this luxurious. They should have made it more rugged and probably differentiate it from the other trims. I'm gonna try the turning radius in this thing to see if it's any good. Uh, not really. I mean, I made the turn, but it's a two lane road and I had to use up a little bit more than the two lanes. It's interesting because back in the day, I remember the Denali's came out with the rear wheel steering and that was really revolutionary in so many ways. And if you think about how off-roading now is really taken off with the enthusiast community and there's vehicles out there like the electric Hummer, which can crab walk, crab crawl, <laughs> like that is, I mean, yeah, that's kind of gimmicky. I will admit that, but if you're really off-roading, to be able to position the truck a little bit better uh, on a trail can actually be the difference uh, between, you know, damaging the vehicle and making through the trail safely or potentially having an issue. So it would have been kind of nice if for this specific version, they had done something more uh, to give the truck a little bit more of a maneuverable um, chassis, if you will, because this is just a Silverado with just different suspension on it and, and meteor tires. Like that's one way you can think about it. But, you know, it does look, I think, pretty good overall. Like the looks of this thing are, I think it looks kind of mean. And when I saw it in pictures, I, I just wasn't really sure about it. But when I saw it in person for the first time, I thought, wow, actually it has a lot of presence. And I, and this is a true story. I let my parents see this thing and they both liked it so much. Keep in mind, my parents are in their late 60s, early 70s. They liked it so much. They were kind of thinking about buying one, which is so strange, but it's really because they can see the, the value of like all the, the luxury in it, uh, all the storage solutions in it, um, just for the fact that it's pretty decent on gas for its size and they feel safe. So kind of interesting how this truck appeals to different people just based on how they perceive the truck. So let's include some stuff. If you are in the market for a new truck and you want something with some off-road capability and you want something that's going to give you just a ton of luxury and tech and great functionality and lots of room and decent safety and great gas mileage and you know towing capabilities and all that stuff this is a great option and again they start at 52 but this one's 62 and some change uh as spec it's a pretty good value i think if you can find one at, at uh, msrp no dealer markup I think you'll be very happy with this. If you're somebody that's looking for something that's more hardcore off-road, this probably isn't the place to go. I mean, you might want to consider a Bronco, a Gladiator, um, if you need a truck, or just a Tacoma. But it's not to say that you can't buy one of these and build it out into something that you really want. And it could be an off-road monster if you want it to be, just based on just based on the diesel, because let's be honest, a lot of these off-roading options that I just discussed don't have diesel options. So that's a huge reason to consider this truck, but you will have to modify it and uh, put more money into it. So as long as you're okay with that, you could have a pretty awesome build. That being said, make sure that uh, your trails are wide enough to accommodate because scratching this beautiful, hot red color paint would be a travesty. <laughs> all right, that's all I got to say, guys. So on that note, if there's any questions, comments, uh, please put them down below. Um, and if you guys learned anything or enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed. I mean, you guys know you've heard this a million times by this point, but it really helps the channel, helps me, of course, um, make more videos and content for you guys. And uh, we got more coming down the pipeline. So with all that, catch you on the next one.